thank you all for being here today, and it is a, a, it's a day that uh, they'll look back on in time and remember who we're sitting in these seats today as the world changes for us over the next course of a few years. I, I would love to thank RTA and uh, Ms. Joanne Graves and Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee for being a part of this and helping us to think forward. Uh, we look forward today to hearing from uh, Steve Bland, uh, Melanie Mentor, and uh, her team, along with uh, Judd Nave as a chairman for helping us host this event here in Wilson County, uh, Lebanon Golf and Country Club as well, uh, for being a part and being a great host. Are there any elected officials in the audience? If there is, what I'd like you to do is please stand and just recognize yourself so I don't miss anybody. If you're an elected official, please rise and tell us who you are. Sponsor the meal. Anyone else? Well, we thank you for being here today and thank you for the job you did. Please give them a round of applause. You know, when you talk about transit, and uh, I can remember just recently we celebrated the 10th year anniversary of the Music City Star. You can see, you know, how the Music City Star got started. And in there was where he'd had his first meeting about 10 years ago with a group of citizens at the courthouse just simply talking about how does this look and how do we work and how do we make it happen here. It was a very proud moment for him that day as we were sitting around talking about their 10th anniversary. And you know for us in Wilson County there are a lot of, a lot of hurdles uh, as we uh, continue to look towards the future. But the Music City Star is a staple for us. You know, we had the Hamilton Springs celebration here just not long ago. Uh, we, we travel as many times as we can with people on that uh, train. We have, of course, they're selling tickets right now. Cheryl Lewis, I know, is a big advocate there, but for the 4th of July train, uh, we've already carried two full loads down to Nashville with the Predators, and we hope they win tonight so we can carry that third train down there. Yes. I did wear my Predators tie for that uh, occasion. <laughs> and you know, we, we, we try to work it both ways. Other special events, we carried a group of the, that run the Music City Marathon down not too long ago and brought a group back out of Nashville here to go to the wine festival that they had at uh, the Expo Center there from Mount Juliet. And so I say all that to say that, you know, we need to be proactive. So many times in our government, you know, we're reactive. You give us an issue, we'll do our best to deal with it because we're dealing with your money uh, and how we spend that's important. But you know, as we uh, talk at the MPO and as we talk just in our county here, the, the issues that are there is, and, and there are other cities that we travel to, like Murfreesboro, that it's tough to get around in. And you know, and as, as, as we know, growth is coming. If you think about times changing, how much has this phone changed in the last 10 years? How much has your car changed in the last 10 years? And because of what Nashville is, we're going to change. We're going to continue to grow. No matter how much Tom Bashers, my planner in the back, tries to organize and make us be as fruitful as we can with our property, people are going to continue to, continue to still come here. And so for us, you know, it's a challenge. The Improve Act, I know I'm going longer than I'm supposed to, but I'll be quick. The Improve Act, you know, gave us a challenge, uh, gave us an opportunity to possibly pass a tax that you could put towards transit. And so many people would say, I, I, you know, I, no more taxes. No more taxes. Don't want any more taxes. Okay. And I got hit just this week. Hey, Mayor, you know, we got 80 new teachers to hire. Okay, got to have those. Uh, need to build a school around north part, northwest portion of uh, Wilson County, 80 to 100 million. Uh, and hey, by the way, uh, you know, we sure wish we could have a computer in everybody's lap when they go home to study. So we want these things, and those education is important. Public safety is important. But I promise you, transit is important as well, and it, it'll be something that we have to deal with. We'll be, uh, and I know Nashville hears it every day, don't let us be like Atlanta. And so the people that came here today, I appreciate you coming, because you'll have to make some tough decisions and the choices that you'll have to make for your children and your children's children. Because you're laying the groundwork. Somebody did it for the Music City Star, and I promise you the counties around us are jealous because we have it and they don't. 
uh, and uh, you know, and, and we're thankful for that, and we're trying to be a good steward of it. But we will have to be pioneers here to lay the right kind of groundwork for the future. I don't know what that means. I know we have resources that we have to take advantage of and, and take care of, but we will have to make some tough decisions. Here to talk about the in motion plan today is a guy that I respect greatly, and Steve Bland. And Steve, uh, of course, just tell you a little bit about him as the Chief Executive Officer of the National Metropolitan Transit Authority and the Regional Transit Authority of Middle Tennessee. He was appointed back in the National MTA CEO in July of 2014 and officially began his new career of duties on August the 25th of 2014. During his extensive 28-year career in public transit, Needless to say, Steve knows his stuff. He serves as a CEO, executive director, or general manager of both the large and small transit uh, areas, including Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Albany, New York, and York, Massachusetts. Under his leadership in, Pins in Pittsburgh, his transit team completed a 500 million new Starlight Rail sub extension. He also serves as the program, also served as a program program director on a CT fast track at not a 9.5 mile advanced bus rapid transit system between New Britain and downtown Hartford, Connecticut. Steve has done a lot of stuff for us uh, so far there. What I like about Steve is that he is able to relate to people with technical terms on everyday language. And he's not afraid to say what has to be said. Uh, and he is gonna carry us forward. And Mr. Steve, I thank you for what you do and look forward to hearing you speak today. Thank, thank you, Mayor Hutto, and I would be the first to say you are always welcome to go over time. Uh, as vice chair of our board, I work for him, and for the residents of Wilson County, you could not ask for a better advocate for this county. He is vice chair of the RTA board. He's active in the MPO, GNRC, pretty much all of the alphabet soup of agencies that represent this county through the region, and frankly, a lot of folks are very jealous of the leadership that you have here, and I really appreciate it. Now, I have some discipline to attend to when I get back to the office because for the last two weeks, I've specifically instructed people to take the Pittsburgh history off my resume. <laughs> so, two announcements to make. I am 100% hardcore, now Predators fan. And second of all, ahead of schedule with Motion Mayor, I'm not sure you're even aware of this, I want to announce a brand new destination for the Music City Star. This week we're headed to Smashville. So there are still tickets, but you cannot hesitate to get into town on Sunday. Believe me, you do not want to drive into downtown Nashville on Sunday. So there are still tickets for our special excursion train into the city for Sunday's playoff game and the closeout of the CMA Festival. So whether or not you're a hockey fan, the environment down there is just incredible. And you all do have the envy of the rest of the region and that you will have the easiest and most stress-free to get in and out of those events uh, upcoming this Sunday. But we absolutely encourage you, if you, this is gonna be a call to action and no one will do that better than Joanne who will follow me on this. But if you do nothing else today, get on your computer, get online, and, uh, and get your tickets. We are charging a fare for it this time. Um, and frankly, as Mayor Huddos led the way here when we do the excursion trains for Wilson County, whatever we can make in excess of the direct cost to, to operate that service will be going to charity. So you can feel great about your team, and you can feel great about what you'll be doing in the community. So all of that is a precursor to uh, the information I have to share. And we intentionally wanted to keep my presentation short on in motion because for me, the, pr the best part of these is the dialogue with folks, the Q&A, the debate, for lack of a better word. I, I don't think Mayor Hutto could have put it any better. You know, this real discussion, whether it's transit or schools, is really about what we want our communities and our counties and our cities to shape up as in the future. Um, having lived around that, basically as he went through my resume, it, it reminded me of what my wife said, which is, you can't seem to hold a job anywhere. Uh, but having lived in different parts of the country, I can tell you firsthand that what's going on in Middle Tennessee right now is unlike anything I've ever seen. And that change is going to come. The question is, how do we, as current residents of Middle Tennessee, want it to happen? So you absolutely have the opportunity to shape your communities 
you know, to do things intentionally as opposed to just kind of letting that wave hit you. And as Mayor Hutto alluded to, then we just kind of got to kind of react to it. So what are we talking about for the region? Uh, it always be double me. Allison, I'll tell you what, if you can maybe. You talked about my experience in transportation, but I am roadkill on the information superhighway. So technology befuddles me. Um, if you look at the, is it all set? So what we're dealing with is this graph to the left. You're very familiar with the picture to the right if you commute in our region. No explanation necessary, no caption necessary. Mayor Hutto said, I, I tend to say, uh, quote, what needs to be said. Uh, you can tell I, I don't run for political office because very often when I say things, people are like, well, that ain't right. Um, and one of the things I say is, and it particularly doesn't go over well in Rutherford County. It might go better here because you have the star. Whatever traffic you experience today is probably as good as it's going to get. And these are the trends we're looking at in our region. When we talk about things like mass transit, I know a lot of folks in the Nashville area, Middle Tennessee, have said, well, we're not Boston, we're not New York, we're not Chicago, we don't have that density, we don't have that growth. Any of you who go into Nashville pretty regularly see that there are actually more construction cranes, more tower cranes in Nashville now than in all but about three or four other cities in the United States. And we're talking about the three or four who have more, we're talking about places like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. We're not talking about Charlotte, Miami, San Antonio, Austin. So the growth is coming and it's how do we deal with it. Uh, a million more people projected to come to our region over the next 25 years. And by the way, none of this is about you should give up your car. I always tell folks, you will pry my steering wheel out of my cold, dead hands. Uh, this is about creating a complementary system where the pieces can work together. And frankly, for those folks who have to drive on those congested highways because a mass transit won't, option won't work for them, the fact that we can provide a greater range of options for people who we can make it work for, folks like Cheryl, who work downtown, live out here, uh, means that's fewer cars to compete with you on the roads. So getting specific to Wilson County, um, I hate to break the news to you if you thought this. You, it's not going to be possible for you to build a bubble around you. Know, I was reminded actually driving out here, yes I drove, I, you will pry the steering wheel out of my cold dead hands. Um, it's just the countryside out here is so gorgeous, you know, and Middle Tennessee is blessed with cities like Lebanon that have been able to preserve that, you know, that city center character, kind of that small town character. So, you know, without that, if you look at the growth specifically in Wilson County over the next 25 years, things that many of you are aware of, you're looking at about a doubling of population, a significant growth in the number of jobs created. And generally speaking, tell me if I'm wrong, that's a good thing. You know, we want to be competitive. We want to create jobs. Certainly helps to grow tax base, maybe relieve the burden on folks, but we, we want to make sure we try to do that in a way that preserves our quality of life. You know, I suspect there's a reason that each and every one of you um, came here and stays here and hope that your kids and your grandkids stay here. And that's really what we're talking about is trying to balance those investments. And from my perspective, I think we can talk to you about how mass transit can complement that. But in all 10 of the counties that the RTA serves, we are very upfront in saying, we want to work with you in helping to build the community that you want to build. And Wilson County and Lebanon and Mount Juliet are not going to be identical to what Murfreesboro wants to do or Williamson County wants to do or Dixon County wants to do. So it's very important that we have a good understanding what your goals are. The in motion plan was about a two year effort. Many of you I know, frankly I saw you in this very room not all that long ago um, talking about these issues. End motion was a two-year strategic planning process for mass transit in our region. And for Wilson County, it's relatively simple. First, tying on to what Carol and Mayor Hutto have already said, you start with a, le with a huge leg up over the nine other counties in our region, or at least eight and a half. Um, in that, you have the Music City Star, and that's the spine we build off of. Every outreach activity we have in Wilson County or in the Donaldson and Hermitage areas in Nashville say, we love the star, we love the star, we love the star. 
the complaint we get is we want more of it. You know, we want more trips earlier and later. So very clearly in the end motion process, we got that. Concerns out here were very similar to what we heard in other parts of the region. Concern about the growth in traffic and congestion. How long is it going to take me to get to where I need to go? Particularly in those congested corridors, we think about, you know, say Lebanon or Mount Juliet into Nashville, which kind of gets worse and worse every day. But even building congestion in the outer rings of, uh, say, you know, Lebanon to Murfreesboro and what we're seeing there. And I hate to, again, you can tell I'm not running for office because this next slide would really kill any chance that I have. Um, I refer, we have different names for this slide. I, I tend to refer to it as the slide of doom. Um, for those of you who get like, you know, EKGs from your doctor and maybe have an artery issue that you're dealing with, uh, they probably have another name for it, but it's very similar. The map on the left is our, um, it's actually nine of the counties in our, or seven counties in the Metropolitan Planning Organization region. What that shows you in red are the roadway segments that are routinely congested as of 2010. And there's a fair number of them. So that's the traffic we're experiencing every day. The map on the right are the projected segments of roadways that will be routinely congested in 2040. Uh, so it will be considerably more. And by the way, that's not assuming that we do nothing. That assumes that the projects contemplated in the Metropolitan Planning Organization's 25-year plan for roadways, mass transit, bridges, roadway expansion, signal projects are completed. And those projects total over 25 years $8.5 billion. So when we talk about preserving taxpayer money, being conservative in our expenditures, we will essentially be expecting to pay $8.5 billion, largely taxpayer funded, to go from the condition on the left to the condition on the right. And I'd always kind of been taught that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So what we're here to talk about are just some of the options. Again, not, not cure-all options. I would say there are no silver bullets, only silver buckshot. Um, no one single solution, including mass transit, is going to work with us on this. But what it can do is in those key congested corridors that carry lots of volume, Think Music City Star, think I-40, think I-65, think I-24, um, think Murfreesboro Road at certain times of the day. We have to be able to figure out how to squeeze more people into the same amount of space. Um, the, the roadway engineers at TDOT will tell you, even if we could afford it, and I know Joanne's going to talk to you a little bit about the IMPROVE Act. So even with the passage of the IMPROVE Act, which will pump hundreds of millions of more dollars into the roadway improvement program over the next uh, however many years, we don't have enough money to expand roadway capacity to accommodate the growth or even make those significant improvements. And on the transit perspective, one lane of road carrying your typical signal, single occupant auto can carry 600, 600 to 1,600 people. Um, if you have mixed traffic on a roadway with frequent bus service, you get that up to 1,000 to 2,800. Dedicated transit lanes, 4,000 to 8,000. And if you have high capacity, high performing fixed guideway transit like the Music City Star, rail, or dedicated bus, you can get anywhere from 10 to 25,000 people per hour through that space. Doesn't fit everywhere, doesn't work everywhere. But where we see that potential, and again, here the star is the key, um, we need to be exploiting that, in our opinion, to the maximum extent possible. Now, it's hard for me to fathom this next slide. We'll talk a little bit about development trends. Hard for me to fathom, every time I come to Wilson County, Jack and or Rick are sponsoring something. So if you really want to say, well, this guy's been working in transit, he works for the government, he really doesn't know what he's talking about. These are guys who literally have put their money where their mouth is. And they're betting on a future where the star it has more service, has better service, has an increased amenity. 
Mayor Hutto alluded to the groundbreaking we did a couple weeks ago on the new Hamilton Spring Station, which will be open within a year. Um, and that station project, yeah, it's an RTA project, but 25% funded by the private sector, um, by, by Rick and Jack's group. First of all, I'd like to give them a, another a round of applause. <laughs> and our thanks, but we're not stupid. We know that they're not, I'm sure they're very charitable people. I'm sure they give to their church and their other causes. This is not a donation from their perspective. This is an investment. I think that's the way we look at mass transit generally is how can we invest in our region to see an actual economic return on that investment. So there's no doubt in my mind, a number of us spent a couple hours yesterday morning with the Urban Land Institute hearing from development professionals around the country about transit-oriented development. And in Middle Tennessee, what's going on at Hamilton Springs is probably the best um, living example we have of that. And the idea is not that, oh, it's all built around transit. I prefer to think of it as people oriented development, because what they're talking about there is not just housing units where you're near a train station. It's about starting to build in mixed uses where I can get that cup of coffee without jumping in my car, maybe do an errand like dry cleaning without jumping in my car, because beyond having more folks ride mass transit and building up those levels, it's all about any other option beside one person getting in one car and taking up more space on congested, ro congested roads. So it's absolutely about development patterns. I know the folks in Lebanon, that the Lebanon City Council, Mayor Ash, understand that. We're working with Mount Juliet on the same, on trying to develop those parts of the city, particularly close to star stations, where we can get you know that kind of density, where we can knock that auto usage down just a little bit. Again, not forcing a car out of a person's hand or, or ownership, I'm going to guess the folks who are living in Hamilton Springs are all going to own cars. Most of them are going to own two. Maybe they can use them a little less. And the folks who need to drive have just a little more space um, to use those roadways. So for Wilson County and the End Motion Plan, um, the options are actually pretty simple. Um, I do a lot of our work is in Nashville. And that's a complicated, well, it's kind of a hot mess. It's a southern term, I believe, um, if I'm able to. I, I did come from Pittsburgh, I do have to admit. So we have other terms that aren't quite as polite. Um, here it's actually not that difficult. What we heard was concern about congestion through the in motion process, reaching out to about a thousand folks in Wilson County, concern about the congestion. So obviously, particularly the in and out of Nashville, what can we do with the star to make it better? Concerns about how we get our seniors around. So as we have folks aging in place, and maybe they're not able to drive as much anymore. And maybe a son or a daughter's taking them to medical appointments or they're taking them shopping. What options might be available there? Are young people who aren't yet able to drive <clears throat> as number two? And then a growing issue that we heard about is, hey, it's not just about people who live here going into Nashville to work. It's about all the jobs that are being created here and trying to get a worker gold as in getting that two-way load, for lack of a better word. If I have to run a train in with full crowd, I'd love to run it out with some people as well. So building on the star. Um, infrastructure upgrades, including things like double tracking, uh, passing siding, improvements in track, track geometry and track infrastructure so that we can increase operating speeds to an extent. Um, what folks who ride the star tell me is it might be a little bit quicker depending on where you're coming from than using I-40. The biggest advantage is it's reliable. Uh, people in Middle Tennessee are nice, but they do have sort of a streak in them that's a little bit on the edge because the biggest smiles I see coming off that train on a weekday morning is when I know there's been a wreck on I-40 and folks are sitting out there for an hour. It's like, we got the secret man and we are not out there. And I'm going to go into my office and my neighbor's going to be about an hour late and I'm just going to smile. Um, so that's a big issue. So actually building up that speed a little bit. So even on, frankly, a free flow day, which are getting to be fewer and fewer, might be a little bit quicker for you to get down there. Um, obviously, new equipment. You know, I always said working in the bus industry, 
I get really worried when a bus is old enough to vote. <laughs> For the star, uh, we're pushing Social Security eligibility with some of our cars. Um, so the ability to upgrade that equipment. Another complaint I get, not quite as often as the frequency is, I really need a bathroom on this thing. Um, so upgrading that equipment is an important piece. But what you see, uh, the creation of transit hubs around the stations where it's easier for taxis, some of the mobility on demand services that we see popping up, so the Ubers, the Lyfts, the other types of activities. Car share, so maybe you're gonna ride out to Mount Juliet and you need to go somewhere where you can't walk from the station and somebody like Zipcar you know, has an installation there where you can you know, rent that car for just an hour or so to get to that destination or carpool to work. So creating more hubs around uh, and in the stations and then looking at, I'll refer to it as the green blob. We haven't come up with a better name. There are some really exciting developments. In fact, we're working on some projects on what's called mobility on demand. So using both technology, combination technology and traditional types of approaches like taxi, paratrains, or what have you. So that rather than saying, well, we're going to run a big bus from you know, Lebanon Station every day to get out to some of the warehouses along the highway to get workers out there, and today maybe you get six, tomorrow you get 15, the next day you get two, um, that it becomes an on-demand service so that as folks are getting on that train in Nashville or Hermitage or what have you to come out, they're activating via their smartphone or what have you, hey, I need to be picked up at Lebanon Station and I need to be taken to Under Armour um, for the start of my shift. And based on sharing the technology that we have, that scheduling system would know, okay, that train's going to get in at 810. Uh, we'll pick you up, make sure we have, you know, a car, minivan, whatever it might be there at 809. So it's there waiting for you. You're in the car and you're off. And whatever that itinerary is, you're not married to that fixed route. Much more efficient, much more customer responsive. Um, and we're looking at inroads in that area, you know, over the next few years. Um, we've already talked a lot about Hamilton Springs. We'll be talking a lot more about Hamilton Springs. So there you can see some of the artist conceptions of what we're talking about. Giving people more of the live, work, play, travel options in our region. A lot of excitement around this. This one is far along. This one we're actually behind the developer in that a lot of that development's been taking place for several years and now we're putting the station infrastructure in. But we're working with the city of Mount Juliet and a developer to do <coughs> higher density development around Mount Juliet Station, particularly um, uh, multifamily housing with a little bit of retail to give people that live, work, hop on the train option. And actually very exciting in Nashville around Donaldson Station, the city of Nashville is looking at creating an entirely new zoning uh, and development district around the station to allow different kinds of developer development. There are actually three or four different developers who are working in that space. And there you can see some of the concepts that are being advanced uh, around Mount Juliet. That doesn't look like Mount Juliet, does it? And I'll be honest with you, and this is where community dialogue and community context becomes important. When the, we and the developer first went into Mount Julie and said, hey, there's interest in developing around the station. Well, what do you think you develop? Well, you know, three, four, five-story apartments. The immediate reaction was, shall we say, not positive. Um, but as that dialogue continued, you know, as we were able to share what the city's goals were and individuals who lived particularly with maybe a half mile of the station, and they really saw what was sort of envisioned and were able to see what had happened in other areas, right now they're actually kind of excited about it. So now the challenge is trying to, you know, as folks like Rick know, trying to put together the finances to make the deal pencil out so that everybody kind of comes out ahead. But we're optimistic that that can be done. Um, we've talked about that. So from our perspective, and then I'll ask Joanne to kind of come up, we very much want to continue the dialogue. Um, the city of Nashville and Mayor Barry are taking a very aggressive approach, and I'll be frank, it's so aggressive it's chewing up a whole lot of our time <laughs> in the uh, production of this, because she's actually looking to go to a referendum next spring within Davidson County to look at some pretty major expansions and improvements around mass transit and related infrastructure in the city. 
that becomes important to Wilson County because, as our Music City Star Riders can tell you, well, once I get off a of Riverfront Station, chances are I still got to get somewhere. So the seamlessness between the Star and other Wilson County options and the system in Nashville or direct connections to Rutherford County and seamless connections there become extremely important and are things that we're working toward. And specifically for the STAR, one of the projects we're advancing is the technical work necessary to say, okay, comprehensively, whether it's signal systems, track, equipment, what do we need to do, how quickly can we do it, and most important, what will it cost to do the types of upgrades to get that service up to, again, what we're looking at is frequency, speed, and span. Um, yeah, we'll work on amenities like making the trains newer, more comfortable, um, having things like Wi-Fi and, you know, all of the bells and whistles. But what we heard over and over again from commuters is, I need frequency and I need speed. Um, woman wasn't in Wilson County, it was in Rutherford County. It became for me the battle cry of the end motion process. We're going through all of these scenarios and all these exercises, you've been through them, and, put your sticky notes up and your red dots up and all the things that planners have you do. And she walked up to me, she just shook her head and said, it's pretty simple, stupid. Make it faster than my car and I'll take it. <laughs> so that's what we're aiming for. Again, Wilson County has several huge advantages. First, you have the star to build on. In most of the counties, we're for all, all but starting from scratch. Second of all, there's tremendous leadership here. Um, certainly Mayor Hutto, his role in all of the regional entities. I don't know how you have time to run Wilson County with all of the other regional stuff you're doing, but frankly, it serves Wilson County well. And then going back to Mayor Craighead here in Lebanon and now with Mayor Ash, recognizing the asset that the star is and leveraging other city investments around it are really key. So if there are time for a few questions, or Joanne, do we want to go up and have you? Do we have any questions or observations or you're out of, I'm out of my mind or get out of here, or I really came for the free lunch or I got a tea time, I want to go. You mentioned increasing the frequency on the train. Are you, going, you mentioned the need to increase once you get off the train, how to get to other places. Are you right. going to increase the frequency at those as well? Yeah, actually one of the core, a lot of the, in the Nashville part of the plan, the thing that's gotten the most attention or proposals for things like new light rail lines and actually the commuter, another commuter rail line from Nashville to um, Clarksville, but those are really long-term, high-dollar, you know, I'll call them moonshot projects. That doesn't mean that they can't happen. It means those are heavy lifts. But a real core of the plan is what we're calling a frequent transit network there where our core services in Nashville run no worse than every 15 minutes and about 20 to 22 hours a day. And that's what we've heard consistently from folks in Nashville. It's also what we've heard from regional commuters who say, well, yeah, whether I'm getting off at Riverfront Station or I'm getting off a bus at Music City Central, I know I've got to go out to Vanderbilt or I need to you know, head to East Nashville or I need to get into the hospitals areas. That And when it's time to, the, the beautiful thing with rail, particularly commuter rail, is we know now when a whole bunch of folks are coming. So we can continue, as we do now, to time buses to different destinations to meet those train arrivals at Riverfront and get folks to where they need to be.